If I could go back in time, what would I tell my 14 year old developer self? That was the year when I became truly serious about Roblox game development. When I was 14, it was 2020. Right? I'm 19 now. It's been around five years. And in that time, I was beginning to take commissions for the first time. The funny thing is, I was a builder. Uh, always was a builder in the past. That was my main skill. But I started with GFX. I tried to take GFX commission because for some reason I thought it was easier or maybe it would be more likely that I'd make money that way because GFX artists are always promoting their work. It seems like, oh yeah, go do GFX commissions. Well, it turns out I didn't get any commissions. I tried posting on X. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom of my X account, that's the funny thing, you'll see posts from that era when I was promoting my GFX work. So that didn't work, but what did work was I had learned Blender, right? To do GFX, you need to know how to do Blender to make those renders. And the cool thing was how easy that it was to transition from doing GFX to doing modeling. And I at first didn't think that I wanted to do that. I remember thinking, eh, I don't really wanna do Blender modeling. It sounds so hard, right? But since I had learned how to do GFX, it was a very easy next step to figure out how to make models. So I watched some tutorials on it. And soon enough, I was a modeler. I could make basic assets. And that was a huge level up for me as a builder. So back then, is there much that I'd tell my developer self? I mean, it's really hard to say because there were so many lessons that I learned in that era. And I think I was making a lot of the right moves. I was like, I wanna make Roblox my job. I'm gonna try all these different methods to make money, try to fund games someday once I make enough Robux. And I think the moves that I made back then were pretty solid. But for the first lesson that I would tell my past self, I would say, Smarty, set your sights on a bigger goal than trying to make 10,000 Robux from commissions. You're worth more than that. You can accomplish more than that. That was my original goal. I wanted to make 10,000 Robux because I was like, okay, once I have 10K Robux, then I'll have enough money to fund my game. I thought that was a lot of money back then. Now I think it's nothing because 10,000 Robux in DevX rates is $35. $35, I thought I was worth that much for months of work. So what I would say to pass Smarty is, dude, value yourself higher. You have skills, you're building up better skills, you're learning Blender, you've figured out these different things, you're taking commissions, you worked on the Ryan's World Roblox game. So set your prices high. And look, man, you're trying to take these commission orders, and yeah, you actually get a lot coming into your DMs. In fact, you get too many. Now that you've been promoting on the dev forum, right? I would, I had a dev forum portfolio. I had my Discord set up. I was posting in these different servers like hidden devs and row devs. Everything was working well. In fact, I had too many orders coming in, so it would have been better off if I set a very high price because it shows confidence to set a high price. That shows you value yourself and your work. And that means people will be more willing to pay that price. So I would tell him, Set your sights high, set higher goals. Try to earn 100,000 Robux or a million Robux. You, you can earn that much. And also I would tell him take more orders in USD. Even though the money technically goes to your parents because you're 14, opening yourself up to USD commissions allows you to make more because oftentimes devs don't have a lot of Robux because they don't have a successful game. So therefore they're, if they're paying you in Robux, they're buying that Robux. So you're gonna get a lot less from them. But instead, if they pay you in USD, you're gonna make more money. That's why my biggest earning commission ever was the Ryan's World Roblox game. I was being paid in USD. Many of you out there are taking commissions for pennies on the dollar. You are taking commissions and you're pricing yourself at like 2,000 Robux for a 1,000 stud by 1,000 stud map. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Value yourself and your work. Yeah, you might get less orders, but you're getting orders that are actually worth it for the few that you do get. And also a lot of people tell me, oh, Smarty, people are making fun of me for having such high prices. Dude, ignore those people. If people make fun of you for having high prices, like after I've told you to change it, to raise your prices, those people were never your customers to begin with. They were just people wanting a cheap commission order. There's different demographics just like there's different target audiences on Roblox. There's people who want 
complex games or who think complex games are the holy grail of Roblox development. And that means that they call any game that's simple slop, right? But what they don't realize is they just aren't in that demographic. That game wasn't made for them. It was made for a different group of people. Just like your commission work. When you charge high, you're selling it to a certain audience that has a budget for that. Now that's gonna repel a lot of people. It's, it's just like people calling Roblox games slop. Do you really think that Jandel cares when people call his game a cash grab? Do you really think he cares when he's sitting there making $10 million a month or more? Hell no. Jandel is sitting rich. He does not give a crap about your Roblox opinion, dude. So it's the exact same thing. Think like Jandel right? Jandel doesn't care about what his critics think because he's making money. He's doing business the way he wants to. That's what matters. That's what matters for you as well. Don't care what people who were never even a customer, never even a lead for you to begin with. But smarty, smarty, people won't even pay that price. Yeah, I, I might have critics, whatever, but people won't even buy a map from me for 100,000 Robux. You're just not marketing in the right places then. See, back then, I marketed mostly on Discord and the dev forum. You get higher paying clients in general when you market on X. And you can also market on YouTube. That's something I didn't know back then. Now that we've covered the first lesson from my past self, let's dive into the second one. So back then, I thought about development in terms of the hobbyist mindset. Like I was partly strategy first, right? I was thinking ahead a little bit. I was thinking, oh yeah, I'm gonna make this money, I'm gonna make these, I'm gonna make this Robux from taking commissions, and then I'm gonna fund games. But I was still thinking like a hobbyist because I thought that Roblox success was a lottery ticket. Like you make the perfect passion project, you insert that into Roblox, and then you impress the entire Roblox community with the most complex game in the world, and then you make millions of dollars and have tens of thousands of players online and, and you become the next Roblox success story, the next jailbreak, the next Brookhaven. Problem is with that mentality is it pushes you to bet everything on one game. When what do we know on this channel? You don't need to bet everything on one game. In fact, you're better off if you make simple games first. So that's one of the biggest lessons I would teach past Smarty, 14 year old Smarty is Hey man, I know that you have big ideas, like you want to make that big roleplay game, etc. That wasn't really 14 year old Smarty, that was more like 15 year old Smarty, but the point still stands. I was working on a lot of complex games. Dude, tone it back, make a simple game first. And then I would also tell him, look man, business on Roblox is just part of the game. Roblox is a business now. That's not a bad thing. I'm, I remember my past self back when game fam first came on the platform i thought it was a bad thing oh these devs are just coming in to make soulless cash grabs i was basically thinking like that not exactly in that language but it, that's basically what i was thinking i thought oh no game fam's coming on here they're gonna ruin the spirit of the platform they're gonna they're gonna crush solo devs they aren't gonna be able to compete i was thinking in all these hobbyist schemas that truly limited my potential without me realizing it. I thought it was bad to make simulator. Nonsense, you can make simulators. And in fact, new devs are better off if they make simulators before making their passion projects. Your passion project is a lot more of a gamble than a simulator because simulators are proven to work in the market. That's why devs make them so often. They know there's a better odds of success. So devs, when they're investing and when they're trying to build a career, they put their chips into the surefire bet. They don't just bet everything on a game that's all chance. Like, oh, people might like this game, people might not. I don't know, I'm gonna spend five years on it and just hope it all works out. That is most devs strategy. It's not really a strategy. And that's how I was thinking back then because I ended up working on this game that took years to make, but we didn't end up finishing because it was just too early. I needed to make more simple games. Now, the third tip I tell younger Smarty. Look, man, I know that you like building. I know that you like modeling, I know but you gotta learn scripting. Let's just be real. If you were to stop spending all your time modeling and building, and you were to learn scripting, even if you didn't get all the 10,000 Robux or however much Robux you think you need to make your games and to hire people to make projects for you, you would be able to make games on your own, especially if you make simple games first. You'd be able to make those projects on your own. I started scripting in like 2021. So it took me a while to get with the program, right? I spent like a whole year, 2020, doing all these commissions and a good part of 2021 not knowing how to script. But man, 
was it a waste of my time not getting that skill, right? I wish that I started learning scripting when I was 11, but I didn't because way back then when I was 11, all the way up until I was like 14, right before I learned it, I thought it would be too hard. I thought I couldn't do it. I thought I'm just stuck being a builder. I was stuck in the fatalist mindset thinking, oh, you're just builder and that's what you'll always be. Nonsense. That is nonsense. You can transition roles whenever you want. So I would tell younger Smarty that, dude, figure it out. You can learn scripting. There's videos out there that will teach you. Just push through it, figure it out. That is gonna help you more than doing modeling and building commissions. You're wasting your time. That's me though. You might be doing well with modeling, building commissions, or you might be able to make enough money to hire a scripter yourself. That is what I tell my past self. That is my opinion. For you, it might be different. For you, it might be worth it to continue doing building. Who knows? Assess your situation for yourself. But in general, scripting is the higher leverage, better skill to have. So that's exactly what I'd tell him. Number four, don't feel obligated to do things for other people. I felt obligated to work on this game for this guy, right? I've talked about this a lot. I was working on this cruise ship commission. It was a very cool build. But this guy kept me working on this over two years. Well, really, I stayed in the project for two years and kept listening to his nonsense. Oh, fix this and this and this and this. Every single day, he'd send me like 15 screenshots of tiny gaps in the walls telling me to fix them. And I remember spending hours and hours and hours fixing small issues on this map. And I continued doing this for almost two years. And it took up a huge portion of my time. And the reason why I did it is because I felt obligated. I thought that I had to do it. And for some reason, I just stuck it on through. It's also kind of the sunk cost fallacy. Oh, I've spent all this time on this commission. I can't quit now. I got to go to the end, get my percentage and be involved in this big project and finish the game. Get it all done. But it was never done. This guy kept giving me fixes until one day I finally just stopped doing it for him as I should have a long time ago. You need to learn to have boundaries. Boundaries are super important. It's just simply saying, this is what I will not tolerate. This is what I will tolerate right? And what I will not tolerate, what you will not tolerate is doing endless fixes beyond your own terms. Your terms are, I'll do this many fixes for you and then it's over. Like I'll do 20 hours of fixes. That's a lot. Or four hours of fixes. And then the commission's over and you got to pay me more or you got to pay me a higher rate to continue doing revisions for you. That is the approach. If you're doing it any other way and you don't have those terms and conditions set from the start, you are cooked. You need to have boundaries. You need to have limits. Dude, if I followed this one lesson, this one point, I would have saved hundreds of hours of my time spent on this work. Hundreds. So learn from my mistakes. This is what I'd tell younger Smarty. You are younger Smarty in this case, in this instance, especially if you're taking commissions. So you're welcome. All right, fifth, to make weird games. All right, Jimmy Games blew up. I would tell him all about that. Make meme games. Make games that... Other people don't want to make because they think they're weird, like poop land or whatever. Because those games can blow up and because everybody else is like, oh, this is a weird idea. There's less competition. So make those. Make simple games first. Lean into weird ideas that have demand and reap the rewards. Number six, Smarty, listen. You've got to make more videos and also believe in your ability to teach other devs. So I would tell my past self, look, man, you need to amp up the confidence level by 500 in your videos, right? I was teaching people on YouTube, but I was not teaching people at this level, right? You have a lot of good knowledge. You need to share it with people. Even back then, a lot of good knowledge, a lot of good stories, a lot of good insights, even like good building tips, but I just didn't make enough videos. I would tell them, amp the confidence up all a ton to match your value, man. You got a lot of value. Now, the next point, I would tell younger Smarty, look, man, age is not a limiting factor. Do not let the fact that you're 14 affect how you think about your ability to get orders and to make money and to do what you want to do in the Roblox development community. See, I used to think even subconsciously, like age is a limiting factor. Oh, I'm too young to make a lot of money. I'm, I should price my work low because I'm young. No, price your work on your merit. Do not price your work on your age. And also, don't assume that age means you can't make a lot of money. I would tell younger Smarty that you should think like an adult. Like, you need to make enough money to pay your bills or two or three or four or five times that. And when you think in that mode, you're going to be more focused on moves that make you a lot more money. And you will raise the bar and you won't have this 
kid limiting belief impacting you. This is a huge factor for devs. They think that they need to price themselves low because they're a kid. And part of the problem with this is that they don't know the value of money in the first place. So if you're watching this and you're like 13, you might not realize just how much money it takes to live. Like it takes a good amount of money. You need to make like tens of thousands of dollars a year to live at bare minimum, 30, 40, $50,000 a year, depending on your area. When you think in that mode, like, oh, I gotta make a living or I gotta make more than that. Even if you don't really need to do that, like you aren't moving out, thinking in that frame of an adult's way of looking at money will help you to make more money. And I hope you can see how that works because the way I was thinking back then limited me. It made me ask for less than I was worth. And also don't let that limit how you view your own skills, right? Judge yourself based on how competent and skilled of a developer you are and also how well you market yourself rather than age. Age does not change how good of a developer you are for 99% of things. There are some extremely skilled 14 year olds who outcompete 40 year olds every single day in making maps and making models and making scripts and in making entire games that they release on the platform as well. So don't let age be a limiting belief for you. So I'm sure this video has helped you a ton. Click this video here to learn even more. Join Scripting Secrets below to get in-depth lessons from me and direct help on your questions about Roblox game development and scripting. And there's also tons of comprehensive lessons in there on programming. It'll help you to especially get the basics down very fast. A lot of people have told me that. So can't wait to see you inside. I think we'll help you out a ton. Peace.